Sports Showtime, The Circus, Jennifer Palmieri, Mark McKinnon, and John Heilman. Mark, um, war is a tragedy, an unmitigated tragedy, even when justified. And politics is often called uh, war by other means, or a, a, a proxy for war so that we don't have to use violence. What are the politics of this moment right now? Because as I was, we've talked about here and, and hit into my last, my last question, there has been a very strange shift for the Republican Party in the United States. Again, I'm old enough to remember Gromyko. I'm old enough to remember the Republican Party is always willing to stand up against autocratic regimes that try to crush democracies. Why this change? Well, it's, it's stunning what's happening geopolitically with Putin. Not a rational actor now, as we obviously know. Mitt Romney was right in 2012 talking about the threat that he faced and everybody laughed at him. But it's, it's, it's just shocking to me. To th I mean, one of the central tenets of the ideological uh, uh, ground floor of the Republican Party was anti-authoritarianism, particularly anti-Russia Putin uh, actors. And to see what's happening now uh, among the Republican Party, Joe Biden is twice as unpopular as Vladimir Putin in the Republican Party. So that tells you how political things have become. That people, people are supporting Putin just because they think it'll make Biden weaker. In other words, they're rooting, they want to win so badly that it doesn't matter what's right or wrong. It just matters who wins. And if they think that Putin is the strong man in this case, and as Donald Trump said yesterday, it's a genius move. Right. Okay, let me, I want to make two points. Um, one of which is, I don't think it's right that Vladimir Putin's not a rational actor. And I think it's, 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 it's wrong to think that. I mean, we, when you hear about talks about camps and lists, it calls to mind Hitler, and, and, and he's not Hitler. And it calls to mind Stalin, and he's not Stalin. He's something else. And, and I think he may in some ways be as evil as those, as those two were, and is as, and as driven by um, a kind of a sense of kind of grand historical, a place in history that he's trying to reach for now as the restorer of the Soviet Union. But Mike McFaul, the, the, the ambassador, former ambassador to, to Russia for the United States, made this point with me on television yesterday. He pointed out, he said, Putin has fought in the following wars, Chechnya in 99, Georgia in 2008, Ukraine in 2014, and Syria in 2015. He's had a lot of experience fighting wars, won them all. I mean, you could, you could say he's a nut, you could also say the guy's fought five wars and won them all, and he, and he thinks he's going to win again because he thinks the West is weak and divided. And that's my second point, which gets to Mark's thing, the, and, and to something Jen said a second ago. Starting before 2016, did Vladimir Putin decided he was going to engage in a systematic campaign of misinformation and disinformation to try to divide the American people and sow distrust division uh, within the Republican Party, within our country. He got Donald Trump elected, or helped get Donald Trump elected, and now we have a more divided country than we've ever had before. And we have a Republican Party where Donald Trump, Mike Pompeo, uh, the, the, that senator who well, shook John his fist Kennedy. back now, the guy, the guy from Missouri with the little tiny Josh, bird, bird hands, Holly. the bird-handed insurrectionist, uh, <laughs> Josh, Josh Hawley. <laughs> they're all out there kind of, they're all out there saying at this moment when Putin's thinking about launching a war that's going to kill hundreds of thousands of people, he's really clever. He's formidable. He's doing something really smart here. That is, in, that is just exactly, I, I was going to say insane, immoral, horrible, but it's also what Putin wanted, and it's what he planned. And to come back to the politics of this, Vladimir Putin has a lot of things on his mind. Land in Europe, his place in history, but also American domestic politics. And this is a test of Joe Biden, and there's no doubt Vladimir Putin would rather see Donald Trump back in the White House in 2024 than Joe Biden be there. And if he can weaken Biden in this process, it's another win for him. He's been winning over and over again. We have to take a quick break, but stick around. We're back with more. Mark McKinnon, John Heilman, and Jennifer Palmieri from the circus.